Hi friends. One of the things that I've been thinking about these past several weeks of pandemic is the question of how we're preserving this moment in our history. So one of the places I go when I want to understand where Trinity has been is to our archives. You can see them here behind me, such as they are. It's the safe where we keep vestry minutes, service records, baptismal, marriage, and funeral records going back to our founding in 1851. And many of you will remember Anne Weichel, who served as Trinity's historian up until her death in 2017. Anne was a, uh, one of the strongest advocates I've ever known for hanging on to preserving our past as well as recording and preserving our present. And I've been thinking about Anne a lot over these past few weeks. I've been wondering what she would think of this moment, what records and sources and materials would be most helpful to her and people like her, Trinity's future historians, when it comes time to telling the story of how this congregation is responding to pandemic. And when she died, Anne left Trinity a generous legacy. It's the Anne Weichel Endowed Fund for Trinity History. And it's partially thanks to that fund that we've been able to make some of the much needed technological improvements we've made in these past few weeks to ensure that Trinity is appropriately archiving both the digital content and the written content that we know we're going to need to hang on to. A couple weeks ago when he presented uh, draft minutes of our Zoom vestry meeting, our current clerk of the vestry, Keith Walters, told us that he'd been trying to think like Anne when he was taking minutes of this vestry Zoom meeting. So these minutes that Keith took will now become a part of our official record. And looking over Keith's excellent minutes caused me to wonder, how did Trinity's vestry record this congregation's response to the last major global pandemic 100 years ago in 1918 and 1919. So I went digging in our archives and this is what I found. So I don't know if you can see this, but these are the vestry notes from April 7th, 1919. This is about, this is several months into the pandemic, which started in the spring of 1918, but we had uh, gone through a couple different cycles by the spring of 1919. And you'll see right here, the rector advised the vestry that it would be necessary to postpone the date of confirmation owing to the fact that the Sunday school was demoralized on account of the influenza ep epidemic and that there is not now sufficient time to give the necessary preparation to candidates for confirmation. That's not unlike the situation that we're in right now. We're not able to do confirmations this spring, as we always have, because we can't gather in person to do them. Although, actually, we've been able to have adequate time and space for preparation. We've got a whole cadre of teenagers and adults who have been well prepared for confirmation. And when that moment happens, they will be confirmed. But like 100 years ago, we're having to do things a little bit differently. And that's being recorded in our minutes. I also found these minutes. These are from the annual meeting of the congregation in 1919. It was held on a Monday, as you can see, Monday, May 5th, about a month after those vestry minutes from April were taken. And at the very bottom of the page, uh, you can see the, the, the congregation gave a, a vote of support for their rector. He was being sued by the bishop at the time. That's a story for an, another occasion. But you see, the rector was much moved by this overwhelming expression of goodwill by his parishioners, warmly marked the meeting, and declared that never before during his pastorate had the organization done better work than at present and encouraged them to continue their good work. Those minutes don't spell out specifically all the reasons why Dr. Morrison commended the people of Trinity for their work 100 years ago. I have to believe that a part of what we're reading in these minutes is reflected in the ways in which this congregation rose to the occasion of a global crisis and responded, as the people of Trinity always have, with compassion, with creativity and innovation, and with a deep commitment to bringing hope and meaning to a world that is filled with fear and despair. So I'm proud of the work that we did 100 years ago, just as Dr. Morrison was. And I have to believe that he and Anne Weichel and so many others are now looking down on us and are proud to see us carrying on the torch that they've handed us. We have been through times like these before, and we will again. Sometimes it's important to turn back to our history and be reminded that we're standing on the shoulders of saints and that we're going to get through this. And we leave it up to the next generation to tell our story.